Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews. Now, I've had an idea for a new series of videos that'll pop up from time to time, and I'm going to call them What's Inside. Um, and basically that's what they're all about. I mean, most of us have bought things like these chargers, LiPo, NiCad, lithium chargers. Um, we use them, but do you know what's inside? Well, chances are that if you've spent good money on a charger, you don't want to go ripping into it to find out how it works or what the construction's like. So that's where I come in. I'm going to pull these things apart. I've got an assortment of tools here. And what we'll do is we'll pull stuff apart and we'll see what's inside. See if it's any good. Because you can tell a lot more by looking at the insides than the outsides. So here we go. Today's What's Inside, we're going to look at these chargers. A range of lithium polymer battery chargers. The first charger we're going to look at is the Turnigy 420. Now this is a cheap little charger. It's not particularly intelligent. You can't change much. It's got a little switch on the front for selecting the charge current, which is see a variable from a, through a range of currents. And it has a set of balance ports on the side. You can plug anything from a two cell to a four cell battery into that. These LEDs light up. They're green when the battery is fully charged. They're red while it's charging. And on here it has a little display that cycles through each cell tells you how many percent full it is which is really just quite a, a rough indication it's got banana plugs no it hasn't it's got a one of those 3.5 millimeter barrel plugs on the side and that's about it really little reset button here absolutely useless no point in having that i never used it it's got a little fan and it comes in a tin box see that but as we say on rc model reviews now what's inside let's have a look i've already undone the screws so we can pop the lid off Ta -da! and there we go that's the guts let's have a closer look at this and see what it's all about just tighten up on this shot for you being my own cameraman okay now here we are we've got you can see each individual cell has its own charging section and that's actually quite good because traditional multi-cell chargers charge everything and then they sort of bring down the high cell so you can overcharge Ever so slightly, a battery pack using a traditional four button charger. These charge each cell individually, so there's no way once the battery gets near full, it'll just keep charging the cells that need a bit more juice. That's actually very good, but unfortunately, the design of this charger is not so flash. It's really basic, it's elementary, it's fundamental. And when I got this one, the calibration was miles out. So th these little um, blue things here are potentiometers. You can actually adjust the voltage at which it switches off and stops charging. And I found these were miles out. I had to tweak them all to get it even remotely close to the 4.2 volts per cell that we should get when our battery is fully charged. Now you can see up here a little daughter board. I'll turn around this way for you. A little daughter board here which has the little LED, little red LED. Um, construction is not too bad. It's typical, you know, mass production. It seems to be um, machine soldered, or it's reflowed most of the stuff. There's, on the bottom there's all sorts of surface mount components and things. So it's okay, you know, for the money. I wouldn't grizzle at it. Um, the fan hasn't even started making a noise yet. One of these typical little tiny muffin fans that you get on these uh, chargers. It's still going quite well. And that's it. It's in a metal case, which is good. Helps dissipate the heat. Although I don't think there's anything actually heat sunk to the case. So it's not a high powered charger. Um, it has a maximum current of only two amps. So if you're charging a four cell, I don't think it'll actually do two amps at four cell. Maybe it will. What do we do? Two amps at four cells, that would be 28 watts. It's not very much really, is it? It's not a 50 watt like the other ones we, the four button chargers that we use. And if you want to see those four button chargers, well, here's one I have wrecked previously. Well, it's not wrecked, it still works. It's actually, uh, I've just repaired it. And you can see this has got a lot more gizmos in it. And there's no, it actually has, I'll go through the bits and pieces. The power comes in through this little jack on the side, little 3.5 mil jack, or you can have them soldered on. This is an IMAX B6. They soldered the wires on here, they shorted out, smoke would come out. Terrible, terrible design. So using this little barrel jack is a much better idea. If you've got an IMAX B6, put some glue on these wires or they'll fray and start shorting out and blow your toolbox up or your power supply or whatever. Um, so the power comes in here, it gets a little bit of filtering, there's a little capacitor here that smooths out the power as it comes in. And it goes into a thing called a boost buck converter what's that mean well it's just a fancy way of saying it'll handle a voltage anywhere from i think 12 volts to 17 volts or something uh, and this will step the voltage up or down depending on what's required to charge your pack because you may only have a seven volt pack or you may have a six cell pack which is really lots of volts and i can't do the mental arithmetic right now but it's more than three so this needs sometimes to have the voltage boosted up 
Here's a little buzzer. That little buzzer is when, you know, the annoying beep beep when I'm doing my videos and you hear in the background beep beep beep. That's when the charger goes off. That's that little beeper. The IMAX B6 has got a really loud beeper. The Accucell 6 has a much quieter one. I prefer the, the more dulcet tones of the Accucell actually. Along here we've got our little buttons that are used when we're changing parameters. They're really cheap as beans buttons. Uh, another big capacitor here because once we've converted our voltage up from the 12 volts we're putting into whatever we might be charging, they do it by chopping the vo voltage up or chopping the current up into small spikes and then those spikes have to be smoothed out again so a big capacitor there smooths it all out. Here's our LCD display of course it sits on a daughter board there that sits above the rest of the circuit board as you can see and Underneath there, there's some more gubbins. There's actually the microcontroller chip lives under there. There's not really much to talk about there. That's just that's the little electronic brains that maintains the correct current and voltage for your battery pack. Now, one interesting thing over here. See all these resistors? A whole lot of resistors there, all in a big array. Well, those are used, I'm pretty sure, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure those are used when you're balancing. They go off to the balance ports here. Because the way a four-button charger works is a bit different to this one. This one has a charger for each cell up to four cells. This one has one charger that does all the cells. So normally the charge current goes out through these banana plugs until the battery is nearly full. And when the battery is almost full, some cells will be fully charged and some cells will not be charged fully. So what it does is if there's a cell that needs charging, say we've got a two cell pack, or say we've got a three cell pack, and two of the cells are at 4.2, which means they're fully charged, and one is at 4.19. The way these chargers work is they will suck down by putting a load on the two cells that are already charged through these resistors. They switch in these resistors to suck down the, the fully charged cells so they're not fully charged anymore. And then they start charging again. So that brings all the cells back up. So we'll have, perhaps if we looked at it, we'd have 4.2, 4.2, 4.19. So it'll flatten down the ones that are on 4.2 till they come down to 4.19 and then recharge all three again in series to give you 4.2 on all the cells. That's why balancing takes a bit of time. It's got to suck the cells down that are too high. And of course, the accuracy of these charges is determined by some component values in here. And it's been my experience with most of the four button chargers that the component tolerances are not very good. Um, sometimes they use 1% resistors. And when you're charging a LiPo, it's, I'll cover this briefly anyway, charging a LiPo, you've got to charge it up to no more than 4.2 volts per cell. If you charge it to 4.2 1 or 4.22, it reduces the life of the battery. If you charge it to 4.19, well, you're not going to get the full capacity of the battery. So it's very important that you charge it accurately to 4.2 volts per cell. So the tolerance of the components in here that measure the voltages on the cells is very important. I've had some of these charges absolute crap when the battery comes off and it says they're all charged, all balanced. They vary from 4.17 to 4.42, yeah, 4.24, sorry. Massive range. Some cells are being overcharged, some are not being properly charged. It's because they tend to use 1% or even 5% components in the voltage measuring circuitry. It's terrible. It's rubbish. It's crap. So in that respect, it's worth paying money for a good charger. The Accucell 6 seems to be pretty damn good. The IMAX, a eh, bit dodgy. Some of them are really bad, some of them not so bad. This one is about average and it's about 0.2 volts off per cell, which is, you know, means it charges to about 4.19 on some and 4.21 on others. So it's not going to be as good for your battery as a really good, more expensive charger like the Accucell. And other ones, big brand name ones that you're all aware of that they charge four times as much as the cheap Chinese product. And really it's the cheap Chinese product with different stickers on it half the time. So that's a four button charger, but there are other options too. If you really don't have any money, you can buy these. In fact, things like this come with a lot of uh, ready to fly models. They're a little plastic thing. You put the 12 volts in through the little barrel jack. These are quite common, as you've seen. And then you plug your balance connector in there. This is a two or three cell charger. Now, they're quite, well, they're five bucks or six bucks or something, super, super cheap. You wonder how can they make something for that price? Well, I'll show you. I've already undone the screws because I think ahead. Now, that's the bottom of the board. It looks quite complicated. There's a lot of bits and pieces soldered on there, lots of tiny bits. The construct, the build quality is quite good, actually. I'm quite happy. It's, um, it's all reflow soldered, looks very nice. And then if we take this board out, you can see on the top, there's not a lot to see on the top actually. But here's that little transformer, the boost buck I was talking about. It steps up the voltage from 12 volts because a, a three cell pack, this charges up to three cells, needs to go up to 12.6 volts. So if you've got 12 volts in, you're not going to get 12.6 out unless you can boost up the voltage a little. And that's what this little transformer does. 
There's uh, three little LEDs here. They light up to show you when the cells are charged. There are three pass elements, as they're called. That's these little black things here. Three pass elements, so it looks as if it charges each cell individually. So it has a single boost buck converter and then three pass elements. So it does charge the cells individually and that means that um, it doesn't have to suck some down like the four button chargers do. Now, just a little tip for you. If you've got a battery that's way out of balance, it'll take forever to balance on one of these four button chargers. And that's because, as I say, what it does is it pumps up all the cells, sucks a bit off the high ones, pumps them all up again, sucks a bit off the high ones. And that process can take forever because you can't suck the, the extra charge out very quickly because it's only got these tiny resistors. So they get really hot and it'll melt and flames will come out if they try and suck too much. So sometimes it's quicker to balance charge by throwing it on one of these. Now this is supposedly and rather optimistically rated at maximum output of 1.2 amps. You're right. Um, it's been my experience, you get about 800 milliamps out of these. So, um, But nevertheless, that will still balance a three cell pack that's wildly out of balance much quicker than the four button charger. And it'll do it more safely because it's not constantly overcharging two of the cells a little bit and then sucking them down again. So it's worth having one of these in your little toolbox um, or your little model box because you never know when you might want to use it and it might save you a little bit of time when you're charging a pack that's been allowed to get way out of balance. Now, one thing I have to say is um, again, component tolerance determines how accurately these things balance and unfortunately I've got, I've got two of these. One of them's really good and this one sucks the big time. It's miles out. So I'm going to go through and find out the resistor values. I'll tweak them up, put some high precision resistors in there, turn it into a unit that I can actually rely on to charge my batteries properly. This actually overcharges one cell to about 4.25 volts. Way too high. It's going to ruin the battery. But if you get a good one, then they're worth it. And if there's a demand, I might show you how to recalibrate these little cheapy chargers. Um, just keeping aside for when you need to balance charge a battery that's gone way out of balance. Um, I'll also, if anyone wants to see it, show you how to calibrate one of these because it has those little pots in there that can lead to tweak the voltages. Calibrating these, not so easy. See, it's all digital. There's no little tweaky bits in there. So what you've got to do then is just actually adjust the resistor values. There's some resistor values in there. Adjust those individually, and that's a lot more pissing around. So... I generally try to avoid doing that if I can. There is a way to calibrate the terminal voltage, the actual final voltage of the pack, and it's a case of pushing buttons and things. I can't remember what it is. I'll have to look it up if anyone wants to know. I'll look it up and I'll do a little video showing you how to do that. There you have it. That's the guts inside these chargers. Now you know. You don't have to pull your own one apart to find out. Now if you've found this video to be of any use, then tell me. If you found it to be a complete and utter waste of your time, tell me that too, because unless I get the feedback, I won't know what ideas are good and what ideas are Bad. So put your comments on the bottom or go to the RC Model Reviews forums. Tell me if you think what's inside is a good theme for a series of videos that will be coming off and on over the months. And if you've got an idea, if you want to see what's inside something, tell me what you want to see inside. And I'll try and get one and rip it apart for you so you can see what's inside without risking your own one. Thank you for watching. See you again soon on RC Model Reviews.